Thank you for so having you, us. You guys got the promotion this year. You went from the Indigo Room to Ballroom 20, much bigger. Awesome. Yeah. What it was, was like? incredible. I, just even hearing the applause for our other our castmates before yeah. going out was quite daunting. And then I didn't get a peek at the room. I don't think any of us did before we went out. So it was exciting. It was very it was cool. Great. Yeah. yeah. It and was I, a sea of people. I couldn't see the back of the room. Yeah. 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 I think. I mean, without Donald Glover, that's why we had so many people. Yeah. Yeah, it was the. He's the one who chases the ball. They boy. knew, right. yeah. Since people just would not show up for him. <laughs> Darn it. Um, yeah, it was great. So I want to ask obviously, there was the, the big transition. Dan left the, the day that the news broke. You guys were all on Twitter sending Dan your love, all of that. Sort of what's your reaction, though, as this guy who's run the show, created the show, given you these characters, wasn't there? What, how did you initially react to it? When the day it broke? Yeah. Well, uh, it was shocking and uh, odd, and you know, it, it was one of those things where, yeah, he's the creator of the show. He gave us this massive opportunity, and the show was working out. And so, you know, we sent him loving tweets, and, uh, and you know, it's one of those things where y you now you just you have to kind of go on. I mean, it's moving on. So, um, uh, with the new guys who were on stage, I worked with them on the IT crowd uh, pilot uh, now five years ago, and they're really good guys. They love the show, and um, so thank God. And you know, they said on stage, you know, they said they're that they're not, you know, they, they love the show and, and want to only further it. So, um, you know, we feel like we're in good hands, but it's definitely going to be different. Yeah. Well, Joel had worked with them before. For the for the three of you, did you have any conversations with with Moses and David when they first came on? Just sort of getting to know you, getting reassurances. Really, this was our first chance to kind of get to know them yeah. here this trip. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was interesting circumstances because we're all excited to be here at Comic Con. We love our fans. I'm sure it was a little nerve wracking for them because it's an introduction to fa a fan base that loved Dan Harmon and has loved our show under Dan Harmon. Um, so it's an, it, it's an interesting transition for fans as well. Um, and they were great. I mean, this yeah. morning it was, it, was, it was nice to meet them and, and realize what big fans of the show they are and, and to have them give us tidbits about what might happen with the show and, and just to feel reassured that the show is going to stay in the same vein. They're not coming in to make huge changes. They're coming in because they love the show and they want to keep doing what the show yeah. was doing. And I also think that they really respect and value the writers that have stayed like Andy Bobrow and Megan Gans mm -hmm. who are both on the stage today. So mm -hmm. I think their voices and the continuity of the writers who've been with us in previous seasons is really going to be felt in the show. You know, because Megan and Andy are as much of fans of the show as we are and the audience in Comic-Con is and they love the inside jokes and like even Megan talking about how, you know, she's the one who really put it together for the Beetlejuice joke that yeah. culminated in the yeah. Halloween episode. So that kind of intense love and attention to detail is still going to be there um, and we're so grateful that they stayed and we value them so much. Now I want to ask Gillian, you made the, the plea to the fans this year of sort of singing their praises a bit. You've done it in past mm -hmm. years. What, what was the point in doing this show where you guys realized these people who watch our show are crazy, but they're awesomely crazy? Like, I, what was there? I think our first year yeah, at Comic Con. It was definitely that. Because yeah. the first year of the show, we really, you know, we were all new to Twitter, so we had that kind of line to the fans then, but it was a little different, and, and it was still hard to tell if people were really watching. You look at the ratings, and they're so up and down and and we just sort of felt very insulated I think doing the show and then we came here right before going into our second season and we were like what everybody loves the show it was almost a false confidence yeah. that we, got. we were like the world loves the show and then you're like no it's just this world here like these are our people here um, but it was our first chance to really see fans like in tears because they didn't get into the panel or thing. We were like, people really care about the show and they really care about our characters. And that's so cool to see people moved by what we're doing and just really passionate about it. For me, I think it was uh, the first time I got pictures tweeted, tweeted mm. to us a drawing or uh, something that the fan Yeah, I used to draw when I was a kid, right? And I remember the amount of time it would take for me to draw a stick figure. So I would see <laughs> these elaborate, 12 hours. Oh my I'd gosh. see these elaborate, you know, s sketches and paintings and I was cartoons and I'm like, really? Comic books? And it's like, they, I know the time it took to make something that brilliant. Um, and then also, like Al said, when we came to Comic-Con, I remember standing uh, backstage before we came out 
and my, we hadn't seen the, the audience, we didn't know how many people were out there, and my fear was, I hope there's some people out there, not even, wasn't even thinking about a full room, just could there be a smattering of people here? And then I, I didn't know if they'd, they'd clap for us, and I remember me and Gillian cried because when we came out, the roar was so, unless you're a rock star or a childish Gambino, yeah. you don't know what that feels like to have a, a roar of love come towards you, and we walked out on that stage, and I was literally blown back by the amount of, it was a standing ovation that lasted like I don't know how long and yeah. it was one of, it might have been you or it, somebody that was there that has been to Comic Con said they don't stand up for people, they don't clap that long, it just, no. so it was really like okay, this is it, this, they like us, we might have a shot at this, so that was what it was for me. Uh, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I think, yes, all those mm -hmm. things and I, th it really solidified for me when we were put on hiatus and um, in December and there's the I th the the fact that the 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 way the fans got louder and louder as the, as the longer it was off the air was really uh, surprising and the flash mobs and the online campaigns and all those things I just thought oh these people uh, are hanging in there and they're only getting stronger and that was really I felt like that was so helpful for us like we needed that support at that time it was we joke about it being the darkest timeline this season, but it was our darkest timeline in the history of the show. The show was not on the air. We, you know, we didn't know when it was going to return. We knew that people were telling us it was going to return, but when you don't have a date that it's coming back, you're kind of like, well, it's up in the air. And, and everybody was, they were just so there for us. Yeah. And they were the ones sort of fighting for us. And they're the reason that we're still, that we're coming back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. their level of organization, yeah. I mean, you know, they, they organized themselves to tweet our advertisers that, that were advertising that during our last few episodes that aired before we were put on hiatus. And it was this really smart and concerted <clears throat> effort to be strategic about what they were doing and not just making a sort of general clamor about their displeasure about us being pulled off the air, but trying to strategically think what they could do that would have an Same impact. Yet, mm -hmm. Buy yeah. Hot Pockets right <laughs> after the show airs. Uh, but I do think that, you know, it's also all these things that they do is an outlet for them because given the way the rating system works right now, there's no way for each one of them to be counted individually. Mm -hmm. But if they do something like this, if they participate in a fan art show or they make sure that we win an online poll, then they feel like they're being heard and yeah. it's registering. And so I think it's as meaningful for them as it is for us to win like the Hulu Best in Show, you know. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. during that hiatus, you know, pilot season is starting, your show sort of on the bubble, and a lot of cases actors on shows in the bubble they'll go out for pilots. The, the Cougar Town guys did it and then the show got renewed. Mm -hmm. None of you did that. Was mm -hmm. that just sort of a, you believe the show was coming back or it was more, I don't want to do another show if it's not this show? Both. I, I think a little bit of both. I think none of us ever, we're giving up hope that the show is not coming back. We all just kind of felt that it should and that it would. And I think on the other side, there was that. You know, you, you read pilots and it's just, we've been so spoiled mm -hmm. by getting to be on this show. And, um, you know, and myself also working on Mad Men, I was just sort of like, well, I don't know, it's gonna take a lot. It's gonna take a lot to, to rival this. And also anything that we do, the fans are affected by it. And I think that if there would have been a lot of news about you know, so and so, someone from community booking a, a pilot in second position, I feel like that would have crushed them. I think that their hearts would have been like, well, what's going to happen to our show? So it kind of was like, we can wait and find out what's going to happen. We don't need to be out there. There's no reason to be out there. We have a great show and we believe in it. So let's ride this out at, with our fingers crossed and know that we'll get back and we'll have another opportunity to, to do what we do. So I think it was more, you know, making sure everybody's okay. Yeah, I used to think I was a pessimist, but I feel like working on this show, I've discovered that I'm actually an optimist <laughs> because I have always been convinced that we would get a full season, our first season, we would get a second season. I, I've just been convinced. When, when all signs are pointing yeah. in the opposite yeah. direction. I have like, just oh, remained convinced. <laughs> Even yesterday, I was like to a vet, I was like, I think we could do six seasons. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we only have 13 for season four, but I, I feel like- She really did. I asked her, so how much longer do you think we're gonna do the show, girl? She said, I think two more years and then a movie. I said, you really? <laughs> you really? The you're gonna be you're epic. on board. You're on board. I've already pitched the movie idea <laughs> to Twitter. Um, <laughs> Channing Tatum is attached to it. Yeah. yeah. To play. His dancing is Torg. incredible. I think the He's whole movie Torg. should revolve around Torg, where it's like Torg. the Princess Bride, and Torg oh, puts a curse on us. Don't Torg. tell them everything. Sorry. Spoiler alert. Princess Bride oh. would be a great 
thing love for us to do. I love bride. the princess bride. Gotta hype them. I'm a, you're my hype. I love <laughs> the princess bride. Princess bride. Toss, toss, toss.